Hey coaches, this is Coach Randy with Radius Athletics. Let's talk basketball. Today I'd like to talk about a baseline out of bounds system or a blob system called odd, even, and zero. And the way the situation typically works is the ball goes out of bounds, the official spots the ball, the players on your team look over to the bench, and the coach calls a play and, and the players execute it. One thing to consider would be an alternative to the traditional play calling method, and that is to let the randomness at which the play clock tends to stop in these situations determine uh, what out-of-bounds set you run. Um, for example, if the ball went out-of-bounds with a minute 57 left on the clock, then because 7, the last digit on the play clock, is an odd number, your team would run odd. If it went out of bounds with a minute 54 on the play clock, your team would run even because 4 is an even number. If the ball went out of bounds with, let's say, 210 on the clock, your, play would run, your team would run 0 because 0 on the last digit of the play clock is 0. And the, there's no call from the bench. Early in the season, your team may need to... Uh, be reminded of this and you know the, the ball goes out of bounds and you you may want to have them echo odd 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 as as you notice the, that that situation warrants it um, but as the season progresses your team will just kind of train themselves to kind of quietly look up at the play clock get in their spots and and run the corresponding play so um, of course odd and even come up due to the laws of probability more often and zero can kind of come you know may not come at all it's it's it, and it, or it or it may come quite often it's just kind of randomness um, I always like to keep zero kind of in my back pocket because it didn't appear very often that like say late in a game I might kind of actually call zero to get to it, um, a specific play that maybe the team hasn't seen yet during the course of the game um, before we go through each play in detail, I wanted to kind of give you some other features of this system and the reason why uh, it can be effective and kind of some reasoning for going this route. Um, first, I wanted all three of the plays to start from the same alignment, a box alignment. Further, I wanted the four player, the same inbounder and the four players you know, in the playing court to start from the same spots. There, that way, when the opposing coach through scouting looks at us, um, there's no there's no different shapes that kind of tip off what's coming. Um, if you run one inbound play from one formation and another from another formation, the team can can go, okay, well, this this looks different from the other inbound plays, and I've seen it on film, or I know this, I know what's coming. Whereas running them from the same initial alignment, but sort of doing some different actions um, can sort of increase the element of surprise on your baseline out of bounds. And couple that with the fact that your players aren't like calling out a name, um, then then you can sometimes uh, you know disguise your inbound actions a little bit better. Another feature of the blob system that was absolutely imperative to me was that. I wanted them, when the play sort of ran its course, we had gone through first option, second option, um, that it connect seamlessly to our half-court offense. What I wanted to avoid was, you know, we run the play for option A, option B. We get the ball in bounds, but the shot doesn't materialize. Now we've got to tuck the ball and call or dribble the ball back up top. And, again, resetting your offense also allows the defense to reset. And against some of the more pressure and aggressive teams, you don't get a chance to reset. So I wanted I wanted things to flow and connect seamlessly. So um, let's now take a moment to look at each one of these plays individually and go through some of their finer points. Again, I wanted them to all start from a box alignment, as you see here in frame one. I off, I typically wanted my point guard to be the inbounder. Uh, not for any other reason other than typically they're the best passer, the best decision maker, and 
and um, oftentimes a good shooter. And a lot of these plays kind of come back to them for a shot. Um, but moreover, I wanted I, what I wanted was players to kind of always be in the same alignment and on the same spots. Um, and then again, each play has different actions. So let's look at odd. The first feature of this inbound play would be what we called an arc screen or an arc pick. What I wanted was the post on the ball side. They're going to be numbers to numbers with the inbounder, right? Their hips are parallel to the baseline. So when the, when the, as soon as the referee drops the ball in the point guard's hands, we wanted to start this arc screen where um, their outside foot is their pivot foot. They kind of pivot out on that foot and really get width. I really don't think you can get wide enough. Like this arc really can't be too arced. I wanted them to get out wide, come back, and end up setting this screen almost like a pin screen where they're pinning the X2, the uh, two's defender in the lane. It's also important that two set up this cut by walking away. Good motion offense principles. Walking away to set up the cut and then nose holes to nose holes with the screen and miss it hip to hip with no air space between the cut and between the screener and the cutter. You should also emphasize this slip option here from the screener. Oftentimes X5 will will sort of uh, you know go with five as they set the screen and when two comes off this screen uh, X5 will show get out in the passing lane to deter the entry which is a good opportunity for slot five to slip back you know into the paint for an easy entry there for an easy basket. Um, but primarily we're looking to get the ball inbounds to two. If we get a good effective screen we really take his man out of the play. We create a lead that might turn into a shot or a driving opportunity. But we really want to reverse the ball. And that's in, that's where it's incumbent upon player three here to make a good cutoff step to, to cut, cut across the lane, you know, step into the lane, cut, a, cut off step across their defender and get up top so we can get a catch and begin ball reversal as you see here in, in frame two. If back in frame one, three just sort of pops out and doesn't doesn't set up this black, this cut to the top, then then you might have trouble getting the ball reversed and the ball gets stuck on the side of the floor. Um, so as what real simple play, nothing revolutionary or tricky or exceptionally crafty here. We just want to swing the ball around the horn, and four is looking to pin screen X one as one enters enters the ball and and enters the playing and enters the court. Four is going to just pin screen for them right here, knocking off X1 and we're looking for a 3 on the backside and any time whether it's in your motion offense or in your baseline out of bounds system, anytime four sets a a pin screen, they immediately look to seal or bury their man along the lane line. So we might get we might get it swung around the horn one for a 3 or one for a post entry to four. But all is swung around the perimeter and one gets a catch. He or she may not have a shot, but we are basically in a three out two in alignment with our with our screeners, you know, balanced. We've got top side side with the with the with the movers, the uh, the cutters, and we are ready to get right into our screening game um, without having to make a play call. All right, next let's look at even. Again, you would run this if the ball was spotted out of bounds and let's say three minutes and 44 seconds was on the play clock because there's an even number at the last digit of the play clock. Your team would run even. Very similar. Again, I wanted to keep the same look and alignment. Um, again, point guard inbounding the ball, Bigs are low, guards are on the elbows, and we start with this. Um, we start with this time. We start with a cross screen from three, which sort of turns into a flare, but it's really more or less just kind of screen the screener action, where we're trying to get. We set a screen with three to maybe get their man to hedge a step or two, and then immediately follow in frame two with the same arc pick or arc screen that we saw in in odd where we get good wide 
a good wide arc on our outside pivot foot. We want to get too wide to where when we come back, our hips are parallel to the lane line and baseline, and we screen for the screener to get the ball in. And from there, it looks much like the play odd, which we just demonstrated. So we're looking to inbound the ball, of course. We might have a, a shot opportunity on the first side. We could obviously have the slip opportunity if, if X5 hedged. One could go straight into five on the slip to the rim. All right. Um, further, three could catch it here. Five slip into the post, and we could go into a post up on the first side. But more often than not, we're looking to reverse it. Same cutoff step from two. I need you to step into the lane, cut off your man, flash, and let's get a reversal. We're swinging it. We're, we're then going to swing it around the horn. Four is going to screen for one as one comes in bounds, and we're looking for the three or the post up on the back side. And again, more than anything, I wanted my baseline out of bounds plays to connect with the greater offense. So if a shot opportunity, a post feed opportunity didn't materialize from the baseline out of bounds, we're already into our screening game. We've got five, can back screen for three. You know, we're going to center the ball back up top and get 65 action from both screeners here or get right into our offense without having to tuck, call, reset, and allow the defense to reset. Okay, finally, let's look at zero. Again, due to the laws of probability, zero should come up the least often. And because of that, I kind of wanted to make, make it our, I don't know, trickiest play or, the, or the, uh, the, the blob that involved the most movement and the most actions because I sort of wanted to keep it in, in my back pocket if, say, late in a game we needed a baseline out of bounds to kind of put the game out of reach or even win the game, I could trump the play clock and call zero from the sideline. And it might or might not be something the team has seen thus far in the game. Again, starts in the same blob alignment. Box set. One inbounding. The ball side post has got to get a good wide arc. The key to this play is five knowing that they're going, they're going to screen for all four of, this, of their teammates in this play. Okay? So as soon as the ball drops into the referee, the referee drops the ball into the point guard's hands, we're going to have two actions. The, high, the, the big wide arc screen and the interchange on the back side. Three is just going to cut to the block. Four is, four is kind of cutting through the elbow. Almost imagine that there's a cone sitting right on the elbow that four has to has to circle around. So they 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 begin those two actions at the same time. All right. So what we want? Good arc screen again. We're looking for two on the first side to 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 get it in. Of course, we set a good effective screen. We might take the three on the first side or the shot on the first side. All right. But five is going to continue with a cross screen for four. As you see in frame two, four, who began this interchange as soon as the ball was dropped in the point guard's hand in frame one, is sort of circling around that imaginary cone sitting on the elbow, and we're getting a screen from five. Oftentimes, two, who got the original inbound pass, can throw it into four on the curl. All right? But let's assume that two still holding the ball, they defended this curl, Five is going to continue their journey of screening for every player, every teammate. So five would then set the thir their third screen as a down screen for three to bring them to the top where we're going to get ball reversal. Right? Or the shot. Three gets the catch from two. Five finishes the play by pin screening one, who was our inbounder, to get them open on the wing. And as we, we turn it to one, we're looking for five on the post up or the shot on the back side. And again, it connects seamlessly with our screening game with three cutters, two screeners, and we're right into our passing game with having, without having to tuck, call, or reset. A couple of points that I would like to make is about this blob system is you don't have to use these three plays. You could use your three different plays, 
that all start in the same alignment. Your three favorite plays that might start in a triangle set or a stack set or a four flat set. But you could apply the concept, concepts of odd, even, and zero to how they're called, how they kind of cycle through the game by using the randomness of the play clock. The, the thing that um, above all I want to emphasize is that your blobs should, at their termination point, connect seamlessly to your half-court offense. So try applying this odd, even, and zero concept to your favorite three plays that start from the same alignment. They may be a box, it may be flat, um, or you may like these three, and, and in which case I hope they work well for you. Uh, thanks for talking basketball with us today, and again, if you'd like to contact me with any other questions, you can visit www.radiusathletics.com or email me, randy at Radius Athletics. Thanks, coaches.